Lisa, she is in labor right now. Bring them comfort, strength, and restoration. Surround them with your loving care through the hands of the heart of those who support them. Remember those who have lost their loved ones. Comfort them in their grief and give them peace and surfaces of understanding. May they feel your presence in their time of trial. We pray for the safety of those who are traveling. Them in your protection and bring them safely to their destinations. As we begin this new week, guide us in following obedience. Help us to be faithful in our actions and decisions, reflecting the love and grace in all that we do. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom and the power. Thank you. 
faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Arius, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loud. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went into where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kuhn, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this time, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Injecting the, the syringe into the orange 
because I realized I wouldn't have to inject Hannah with the feelings whenever she needed for the rest of her life. It was not easy to give her a shot in her tiny spot, belly, thigh, and arms. I remember how desperately Bingham and I prayed to God for Hannah's healing. Now she is 16 years old and she has an insulin pump and a sensor that monitors her blood sugar 24 7. Today's scripture is about a healing miracle by Jesus. There are two stories in this scripture. One is about a woman who was sick with hemorrhages for 12 years. And the other is about the 12 years old daughter of Jairus, a synagogue leader who was at the point of death. The woman and Jairus were desperate for healing. Both of them, the woman and Jairus' daughter, were victims of illness in female and ritually One as a result of hemorrhage, and one as a result of death. In Jesus' time, females did not count as people, and those who were sick or dead were treated as unclean. Especially if people touched a woman who was bleeding or a person who was dead, they were supposed to become unclean as well. <coughs> the story of the scripture goes like this. Jesus had just crossed the back over the Sea of Galilee with a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. The one who crawled, crowd was a man named Jairus a respected leader of the local synagogue. In a desperate sea, Jairus threw himself at Jesus' feet. My little daughter is dying, he said, his voice trembling with emotion. Please come and lay your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. Moved by his faith, Jesus went with Jairus, and the crowd followed, pressing in on him from all sides. In the midst of the crowd was a man, the, the woman who had been suffering from severe bleeding for 12 years. She had seen many doctors and spent all she had, but her condition only worsened. Desperate for good need, she had heard about Jesus and thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. With a determination, she pushed through the crowd and reached out, managing to touch the edge of Jesus' wall. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. Jesus, aware that power had gone out of him, turned around in crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? His disciples, puzzled by the question, said, You see the people crowding against you, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. The woman, knowing what had happened to her, came forward, trembling with fear. She fell at his feet and told him the whole truth. Daughter, Jesus said to her, your faith Whoever peace and be free from your suffering. 
while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from Jairus' house with devastating news. Your daughter is dead. Is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John. When they arrived at the Jairus' house, they found people weeping and wailing loudly. Jesus answered and said, Why all this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. The crowd left heaven, but he put them all outside. Taking the child's father and mother and his disciples, he went to where the child was. He took her by hand, said to her, Talitaku, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. The parents were probably astonished. Jesus gave them strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. In the story of today, we can see their desperation for healing. In other words, we can see their faith for healing. The woman who had hemorrhages for 12 years had faith to be healed by touching even Jesus' clothes. The leader of the synagogue had faith that Jesus could heal his daughter, so he fell to his knees asking for Jesus' help. They ended up being healed and even brought back from the dead. The woman with the hemorrhage was an outcast and unclean, but she became part of the community and Jairus' daughter was unclean because she was dead. However, she was clean because she was alive again. In their physical condition, it looks like they are only healed physically. However, if we see them in their social and spiritual condition, they are healed not only physically, but also socially and spiritually. It's because they are free not only from their disease, but also from being outcasts and unclean. So I believe that theologically, this healing touch makes them heal not only physically, but also spiritually for their salvation. They do not come to God as unclean, but now they can come to God because they are clean. <coughs> Some of you might have a question. How do we form faith when healing does not happen? In other words, if we plead and pray to God for healing and it does not happen, how do we hold on to our faith? <clears throat> Let's go back to my story of Hannah. <clears throat> I shared earlier how desperate Jason and I prayed to God for Hannah's healing. And yet, she's still dealing with type 1 diabetes since she was dead. However, what I can share with you is that God's healing touch for Jason, Hannah, and me was peace and acceptance in the face of disappointment and awareness of the continuing presence of God in our times of despair. For Hannah, she had learned patience, compassion, sick and a passion to help those in need. For me, I have gained a deeper understanding
much by Jesus still happens nowadays. If we look for just physical healing, we cannot see what real, the real healing is in our lives. However, we open our eyes and spirit. We can see the whole realm of healing. Let us respond to God by offering ourselves and our gifts. Also, speak our word for the offering.
Amen. Amen.